What's up guys, welcome back to another Salt and Popper video. My name is Chad and today I have some really exciting news for you. The Salt and Popper tokens, the custom set, the Salt series, they're done, they're here, they're printed, and they look incredible. I finally have them, we can play with them, and today I'm going to give away a set. Um, I promised I would do a giveaway when I hit 100 subs. We hit 100 subs. Um, I'm super, super excited, so to celebrate, I'm going to give away a full foil set of the tokens. Uh, make sure that you hang out to find out how to win some. But we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive and a shout out uh, for each of these amazing pieces of art so that you can see all the little details and meticulous thought and planning that went into them. And to make sure we give a shout out to the incredible artist. His name's Michael Katchan. I found him on Twitter. Um, he was a joy to work with. He was so much fun, and he absolutely crushed the style that I was going for. You can find his links to his Twitter down in the description below, or you can look for him right up here. I'll post his socials above so that you can check him out. Um, firstly, thank you so much for all the support on the channel. Let's dive in and take a look at these incredible cards. The first one we tackled was the blood token. Uh, this was the first and strongest idea I had for this token series. I didn't even know at this point it would be a series, but I reached out to him. He came back with some awesome ideas and we settled on this salt shaker used as a blood vial idea. Um, he absolutely crushed the small details in here. The realism on the hand is incredible. Um, you'll notice some of the jewelry ties in with the colors of the logo of the Salt and Popper logo design, um, but we'll get more into those details as we look at some of the other tokens. We really wanted to toe the line of just real and gory and kind of dark enough, um, but still fun and in the theme of that kind of Victorian Gothic, almost, um, almost Innistradian uh, style of Magic the Gathering art, and I think he absolutely crushed it. The next token we did together was the Monarch token. Now, this one took a long time to get right. We went through a couple different versions and styles and colors, and ultimately we settled on this, and I really, really love how this came together. Um, we wanted the tokens to be related, at least in story, together and for them to all kind of tell this cohesive series and make it really a set, not just five random tokens. And for the Monarch token, we went with this rough hewn, uh, realistic crown looking design with a gemstone centerpiece that matches most of the logo colors and style. Um, in the background, you'll see that storyline element that we really wanted to tie in. We wanted the crown to be the focal point, but we wanted it to have a little bit of theatrics in the background. So you'll see an attack scene in the background with that same hand, matching jewelry, and that iconic salt shaker. Uh, the monarch has been attacked and the crown is up for grabs. I wanted to tie that in with the actual mechanics of how you get the monarch in the game, which is to attack the person with the crown. Um, really, really happy with how this design came out, and I just want to give a detailed shout out to that marble floor and that shadow design because he absolutely crushed this art. Next up is the clue token. Now, we had a couple different ideas for this, but I thought a really cool one would be to show the same scene we had just visited in the Monarch token, that murder scene in the background, but at a different angle, a little bit of a zoom in, almost a, a detective viewing the, uh, viewing the scene for clues. And we came up on this idea of a top-down view with that same iconic hand, the matching jewelry, and that salt shaker, but this time we've been left a clue from the killer, that thumbprint that he absolutely nailed. It looks so good and so realistic, and I'm really, really happy with this. One more quick shout out to that marble floor design in the background, because man, that looks really, really good. But super happy with this token. It looks incredible in foil, and I'm really, really excited for you guys to have a chance to use them. The next token we did together was the treasure token, and I knew this one had to be incredible, and I really knew that we had to go over the top for this one because it was going to be the most used token by far. 
Uh, with Deadly Dispute being as popular as it is, treasure tokens are everywhere in Popper, and I knew that anyone who had one was going to want to play with it, so I knew that it needed to be perfect. We messed with a lot of different options and designs for this, but really knew we had to nail the details, and so we decided to go with a scene that kept the storyline going, but instead of showing the assassination, showed the payment. Uh, you can see on the desk we have a little kill order or kill contract with a rough sketch of that crown as well as uh, that nice bloody knife stabbed through to really drive home. There's no subtlety here. Uh, somebody needs to go down. And there are a couple of little Easter eggs. You can actually see the uh, crest of the Salt and Popper logo in that uh, wax seal at the top of the letter as well as those same iconic jewelry pieces that keep coming back, and that nice bloody salt shaker from the clue token being used as proof of death for the payment. Uh, Michael really knocked it out of the park with those sunbeams, the wood grain on the desk, and the little dust particles floating here, as well as that cloth bag holding the gold coins really does look incredible, and I hope you guys like it. The last token design we worked on together was the food token. And instead of trying to further the story, we instead tried to do a little backstory with the token, similar to how the clue token viewed the monarch scene in a different perspective. We thought it would be fun to do the food token, but to flash back all the way to that first blood token and show what it was being used for. Um, and in this token, you can see our monarch who may or may not be a vampire, using the blood token in a pretty gruesome way. Um, you'll notice a lot of really subtle details in this, such as some biology elements that might help you figure out what exactly that piece of meat is. And some little details like that nice uh, crest logo, the channel iconology being tied in with that embroidery on the napkin. Uh, Michael really had a lot of fun with this piece, and you can tell it looks awesome and I'm really, really happy with it. And the last piece we did together, at least for this set, until next time, is going to be the card back design. And I knew that this card back design needed to be absolutely awesome. So I really had some strong ideas for this, and Michael executed them incredibly. I really like the worn leather design look that the original Magic the Gathering card back has, as well as I took some inspiration from uh, the Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 kind of manual look with those metal rivets, the gemstone encrusted uh, metal accent marks, worn leather tome style, but in 2D. Uh, those books had a big impact on me in my early childhood, and I really wanted to do a nod to those here. And Michael absolutely crushed the metal rivets, those brackets look incredible, and the gemstones for that logo look so, so good. Uh, I also had an idea that since I wasn't going to be selling these, I was going to be giving them away, I wanted to use them as sort of like business cards. So we emblazoned the name of the channel as well as uh, some of my social media account logos in gold foiled stamps on the card itself so that when I do give them away, uh, you'll know where they came from and where you can find me. I plan on giving these away pretty much anywhere. If you play in any of my in-person events, you'll get one for free as well as um, any, if you meet me at any big events, I plan on giving them away pretty much all weekend at Magic 30. So if you want one, come up and say hi. Um, I'll have them on hand to give out, and I hope to see you guys there. We knew that this was a really, really cool design, and so you'll notice my background here is also the playmat design. Uh, I saw this card back, and I knew it was going to be wasted on just a card back, so I asked Michael if he would do a little bit of a special request for me and make it huge. Um, and boy, did he crush it. After sourcing a couple of different options, I can proudly give you guys the Salt and Popper playmat. And man, does this thing look incredible in person. These will be for sale coming soon. I'm still working on sourcing a large enough order, but come check them out in person in MTG uh, Vegas for Magic 30 if you're interested. And once again, please go show Michael some love. Uh, he did an absolutely incredible job, and the man deserves more credit than I can give him. So, show him some love. To win a set of these awesome foil tokens, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Just comment down below, and for next week's video, I'll pick one lucky comment, and we'll get you a set of these awesome foil tokens. I hope you have a ton of fun playing with them and showing them off, 
as usual, guys. Thank you for watching, and goodbye forever, unless I see you next time. Peace.